to raise preliminary issues, if any. Honorable Chair and members, on behalf of the Assembly, we have no preliminary issue. We shall crave your leave to address any if they are raised by the other side. It's granted. I now invite the Governor of Meru to raise preliminary issues, if any. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> we have uh, one preliminary issue by way of housekeeping. We were served with a motion of impeachment together with the witness statements. We discovered that uh, some of the witness statements that uh, were served on us at the Senate hearing were not part of the witness statements that featured before the county assembly. It therefore became necessary and to redeem time, we elected to one, file a supplementary affidavit, which we have already filed and served on our counterparts. They have not raised any objection to our filing, so that to bring into perspective the case of the governor of uh, Meru County. The other issue we realized that uh, in the bundle of the documents supporting the response of the governor, we had omitted three affidavits, which we have already supplied by way of the supplementary affidavit I've referred to. This is the supplementary affidavit sworn on 26th of December, 2022. It was sworn by one Harrison Gatombo. Uh, Honorable Chairman, I would crave the leave of this court that you allow us to file that supplementary affidavit out of, outside the stipulated time that was stipulated in our invitation and they already filed and served supplementary affidavit to be deemed as properly filed and served. And you are honorable chairman, we are not going to dislocate any part of the hearing by allowing that supplementary affidavit, and we are not going to inconvenience the, this committee or our counterpart. We pray, honorable chairman, to allow us to admit that supplementary affidavit. Th thank you. Chairman, I, I kind of seek you allow my learned friend, Mr. Mutuma, to raise something. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, additionally, we also realized that uh, while we were trying to beat the deadline, we omitted to include one video that forms part of our record and uh, evidence. That video is mentioned in our affidavit, but it was omitted. It was not uploaded in the flash disk. We have already supplied it through email to council representing a county assembly. We have also shared the same uh, with the secretariat. We beg that the same be admitted and we are allowed to use the same. Thank you. Welcome. Well, now, uh, County Assembly, you've had. Do you have anything to say? Yes, Honorable Chair and Senators, we strenuously oppose that request because what they are trying to do is to bring evidence by way of ambush. The rules of this House are very clear. They were given an opportunity to file those documents. Why it is an ambush chair, they are asking you to allow them to put in four affidavits, five videos, and three exhibits. Why it is an ambush is we will spend the whole of today before you, and tomorrow is their day. When shall we have the time to study that additional material, and if necessary, 
file our response to it. So our ground number one for objection chair is that it is an ambush. Number two, ordinarily, because there is a quasi-judicial procedure, a party seeking to introduce new material must persuade you that the material in question could not with due diligence have been filed within the time given. And time permitting, I will show you why all the material they now seek to bring after the horse has bolted was material within their possession. It was material which with due diligence they would have brought in within the timelines. We are also telling you they, are not, they have not been diligent because on the record before you, this additional material, together with the material they, are, they have already placed before you within the time, is material that ought to have been placed in the first instance before the county assembly. On the record, the governor was given seven days to file a response before the county assembly. She did not avail herself of that opportunity. So that as we speak, Chair, even the material filed on time, we are seeing it for the first time when under the rules, that material ought to have been placed before the county assembly. It was not. Number four, we are hoping we will persuade you that even when you read the proposed new material on its face, there is nothing in it that would justify the request now being made. And our fifth objection is that this is part of the ploy chair, knowing how packed and time bound these proceedings are, to eat into so much of today's time through preliminary issues, knowing very well, of course, that the time to be eaten is the one my team would normally use. Chair, why do we raise all these things? They tell you casually, they sent these things by email. What they don't tell you is that that email was sent at 5.24 p.m. yesterday. Yesterday was Boxing Day, but even if it were a working day, 5.24 p.m. As a matter of fact, Chair, we have only seen that email today morning while wrapping our bundles to come to today's session. And when we saw it, Chair, among the five things they're asking you to, one of the things we hope you note if you're, you're familiar with the documents they ought to introduce, is that they are telling you in the, in the, the proposed additional affidavit by Gatobu Muduri at paragraph four, that these videos that they propose to introduce, they are videos they have edited. They tell you that in paragraph number four, number seven, number eight, number nine, and number 10. He is telling you, I edited these videos by adding captions and he's also admitting to you that the same captions he put are erroneous. That's why now he needs to put correct captions. The question, Chair, is based on that deposition where the person requesting is already admitting to you in black and white that the reason they want to bring this new evidence is because they edited the videos they brought to you within time. So for that reason, Chair, we say that affidavit by Patrick Gatobu could not be admissible. There is another one by Harrison Gatobu. These are two Gatobus, Chair. It's a different person. One is Harrison. The other one is Patrick. He's telling you when you read his affidavit 
that he is the chief of staff of the governor and that he is aware of all the allegations under charge number one. He is aware of the circumstances and therefore he should be allowed to put in this additional affidavit. Chair, I urge you, like everyone in the room, to know that the person who would be competent to speak to county appointments is not the governor's chief of staff. It is the secretary of the county public service board. Feeling that, it will be the county secretary. So the man now purporting to ask you to introduce additional evidence by way of an affidavit is not the man in law who is qualified to speak to the matters he proposes to speak to. And of course, he goes on to tell you many other things. He tells you some documents were inadvertently omitted and whatnot and whatnot. Chair, if you go to this third affidavit they propose to put, it is by a gentleman called Edward Bundy Jeffrey. They are telling you the reason they want to put this document is because this gentleman put before you an affidavit that was not signed, an affidavit that was not commissioned by Commissioner for Oaths, and because he forgot to do that, which is lack of due diligence, he's asking you, the committee should allow him. They have a further affidavit by a gentleman called Samuel Mwenda, same reasons, no ground given. The annexures they propose to put you, one of them is an annexure about an invitation letter which is already in the governor's response as filed. So we don't know, and in any event, this annexure should have been put before the county assembly in the first instance. They had all seven days to do that. They chose not to. Lastly, they propose to put before you a document that is nine pages, which is the speech given by the governor on 19th October 2022. 19th October 2022 was about six weeks before the impeachment. So the governor was always in possession of that document. The million dollar question is, why wasn't it put before the assembly? And why wasn't it put before you on time? For those very many reasons, Chair, and I really regret we are taking more of the time we should be doing the case, we beseech you that they have not laid out a good reason for the request they make before you. In the event, Chair, we are unable to persuade you to reject this request, in the event the House grants the request, we crave that you similarly allow us a request to also put our additional documents in response to this additional material because at any rate it's a trial what is good for the goose should be good for the gander thank you chair chair Very well you you're most welcome allow me to allay your fears that the governor's team is eating into your time no we have carefully budgeted for time. There is time for preliminary, and we are still there within that space. Chair, with your permission. Uh, Chair, a brief rejoinder, with your permission. Yes, uh, Governor. Uh, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. The proceedings before you, Chair, are quasi judicial in nature. The committee is sitting, having the same powers as a court of law. And in doing that, the committee is called upon to uphold Article 49 and 50 of the Constitution by granting the governor, who is equivalent to an accused person, the right to a fair hearing, 
that right to a fair hearing, Honorable Chair, entails the right to produce any materials that she feels are necessary for the tribunal's consideration to assist in her defense. I do not know why the county assembly is afraid of these materials being introduced because they will assist in the tribunal reaching a fair hearing. It is only fair that all materials are presented before you. Uh, Honorable Chair, I have had an occasion to look at the standing orders and the rules governing these proceedings. Rule 20 bars the county assembly from introducing any new material or evidence that was not previously relied upon during the impeachment proceedings at the county assembly. My learned friend, Mr. Yankolo, Dr. Yankolo Rada, has not denied that the four witness statements, one by DMK, the mover of the motion, another one by Mwenda Idili, another one by Lucy Mokaria, and Father Elias Kenoti, were not presented during the impeachment motion at the county assembly. So yeah, that's but, a distortion of your rules. The, in the county assembly, there is no room for witness statements. Those witness statements were filed before you pursuant to your studying orders requiring us to file the witness statements. So us being accused of sneaking in the witness statement is really unfair because we were only obeying the rules of the Senate. There are no similar rules at the county assembly. Council. Don't run the risk of uh, annoying members of this special committee. Be composed. Listen to your counterpart. When it's done, ask for time. We'll give you to respond. I'm guided, Chair. I was only interjecting because that's how we do it in high court. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to disrespect the house. Maybe it's my <laughs> lack of familiarity with your rules. My apologies, Chair. Your apologies are accepted. Thank you, Chair, for the protection. Uh, Rule 20, Honorable Chair, bars presentation of new evidence. Evidence can be by way of an affidavit or a witness being produced for the very first time. We have, new, we have four new witnesses being presented before you today that did not form uh, part of the proceedings at the county assembly. We are interacting with their sentiments and their aversions for the very, very, very first time during these uh, uh, proceedings. It's only fair that the governor is given an opportunity to rebut to any information that is being introduced for the very first time. It is on that basis that we are seeking humbly to be allowed to put in an affidavit that has already been filed and served. Council is admitting that he has gone through the affidavit. In fact, he's even quoting the contents of that affidavit. There will be no prejudice of any kind if we are allowed to rely on that affidavit. On the video we are seeking to produce, it is actually mentioned in our affidavit. It forms uh, part of our documents and uh, materials to be read upon, only that it was uh, omitted to be uploaded inadvertently. It's only fair that we are given that opportunity, but per my learned friend, Mr. Mwangi, has one or two issues that uh, he wants to rebut on. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my learned friend has addressed uh, all the issues, save to uh, give comfort to the Chair. The team for the County Assembly has clearly indicated they have gone through the evidential materials and they have found nothing in those materials. If there is nothing, then they should allow us to use the, 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 the evidential materials that we have brought before this committee. Honorable Chair, aspersions have been cast on the merits of those affidavits. This is not the time. They wait for the hearing. The witnesses will be here for cross examination. They will have their day, Your Honor. I honorably uh, and humbly pray that you allow us to rely on those statements. Mistakes are always made, and human is to error. We inadvertently left out uh, those uh, materials. And when you look at the index in our bundle, we have referred to those uh, affidavits. The fact that it was an inadvertence, we should not be punished, Your Honor, for being human. We pray that you allow those uh, affidavits. Thank you. So, uh, Council for the County Assembly, uh, while you are speaking the first time, senators were not listening to you. 
because you had not been given the mic. Now this is the time for you to respond, finally. And uh, as you do, we would be happy if you could tell us if you are aware of Rule 20. So, Chair, for your guidance, do you require me to repeat my entire objection as I put it? We, no, okay. just, just okay. wrap up your issues. And we are keen to know whether you are aware of Rule 20. Yes, Chair, there is a Rule 20. Uh, the Assembly shall not introduce any new evidence. The question, Chair, is whether they have showed which is the new evidence that we have introduced. It is easy to allege it, that we have introduced new evidence. What they should have been doing in their application is to tell you the specific items of evidence that we have sneaked in that therefore warrants their request. They tell you the basis of their request, Chair, is because we filed witness statements and they now need to respond to the matters in those witness statements. They need to tell you, without merely alleging it, which statement introduces which new evidence. Because we are allowed by Rule 7, paragraph C, to file the witness statements. And as I said, the witness statements would not have been filed, but for the invitation we received from you requiring us specifically so, Chair, they have to tell you, it's, it's very easy to allege anything, but I would really be happy to hear from them. What is the specific item of new evidence? Because as far we are, as we are concerned, we have not introduced even a shred of new evidence. It is easy to allege. Proving it is a different matter. And they can't get the request granted merely because they allege. They have to tell you in the witness statement of the father, in the witness statement of DMK, in the witness statement of uh, Lucy and Mondaydili, the following matters, which were not before the assembly or which are not in the impeachment motion, have been sneaked in. And that puts me, Chair, then in a disadvantage because I, I'm being asked to respond to a blanket accusation of sneaking new material without being told which is the new material. And there is no material attached to any of those witness statements, so I don't know where the claim comes from. All our evidence is attached to the impeachment motion, which was before the assembly, and which they have always had. So which is this new other evidence? Unless they are saying the witness statement is the new evidence, clearly that cannot be correct. Chair, we still urge you to decline this request. In the event you are unable to decline it, we equally request. Then allow us to also put on record our rejoinder because it's the minimum we can ask in the circumstances. But then I have to warn everyone, we're in a time-bound proceeding. When you give me that time, unless now it is tomorrow and unless today we adjourn early enough to enable my team to properly come through the, all these five affidavits and these other material and put in our supplementary affidavits. It's just not fair, Chair, especially given all these things ought to have been put before the Assembly, and they were not, and no reason has been placed before you. Chair. Thank you very much. With uh, your permission, Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Sfuna, the Senator from Nairobi. Chairman, uh, I think there's a, a very straightforward decision to be made by this committee. This additional material, the additional, uh, you know, the the affidavits, the supplementary affidavit, uh, a video that was left out, the request from the governor is whether the committee can allow these things to form part of a record. And I believe that if you are going to execute your mandate as this committee, you should be in possession or in view of every single piece of documentation that will help this committee to unravel this question. Mr. Chair, I want to refer you to, uh, and, and, and my learned colleagues on the other side, to rule number 10, that in fact this committee may, at the request of the county assembly or even the governor, invite or summon any person, that is new evidence, to appear and give evidence before this committee. That is, any person 
includes people who have not even submitted any affidavits today. So if by, uh, because I've had references to certain people here, if we want to serve on, for instance, uh, I don't know if there's an affidavit by the governor's husband, it is within the purview of this committee to be able to summon. So I don't think that uh, uh, the issues that are being raised by the council for the assembly really should be raised at this particular point. So the question of admissibility is a matter for the committee to determine. The question of whether the videos are edited or not, it is for us to determine, Mr. Chair. So I just wanted to give that uh, uh, guidance. And in fact, uh, on the question of Rule 20, uh, my learned colleague knows that when the rule talks about new evidence, it's talking about things that were not part of the matters that were submitted before the county assembly. And because the county assembly is a house of record, just like the Senate, it is not difficult for us to decipher what is new and what was not uh, new, Mr. Chair. That would just be my contribution. Th thank you. Uh, colleagues, I think uh, the Senator for Nairobi has spoken for many of you. This is a decision that we are not going to make in plenary. I want to allow parties to withdraw to your holding rooms uh, for 15 minutes. You can enjoy your cup of tea. Uh, and when we come back, we are going to make a decision, uh, councils, on these supplementary materials. If it is new evidence, we will categorize. If it is a question of just rearranging the videos that were brought and attached to this, again, we shall speak to it. And if it is something which is not admissible, a council for the county assembly, rest most, uh, sit most reassured, we would never, and council for the governor, we will not deny the governor her right to be heard and her right to a fair defense. Thank you. We shall resume after 15 minutes. Well, uh, the special uh, committee of uh, the Senate that is hearing the impeachment proceedings of uh, Meru Governor Honorable Kawira Mongaza taking a 15-minute break. The hearings has already started at uh, 10 this morning with uh, both parties, that is the county assembly party being represented by its council as well as uh, the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza's party through her council also representing her and uh, tabling their bit of uh, this uh, particular hearing. So far what has been happening since morning is that uh, uh, charges or uh, grounds of her impeachment uh, that is grounds for the impeachment of Kawira Mwangaza were read to her by the council representing the county assembly a number of grounds read to her including grossly violating various articles of the constitution for instance leadership and integrity act there are also other grounds including holding a public uh, church incitement uh, holding public rally and inciting the church in public rallies humiliation of uh, the minority leader violently grabbing a microphone from the minority leader of course uh, she said to have falsely accused mcs and other leaders of uh, cartelism and intimidation among others also falsely accusing senator of wanting a section of positions in the office as well as uh, vilification of cs of agriculture these are just a number of the grounds or the charges